Man, it's been a while since I've had such a fun time at the movie theaters. Uh, and I've been watching a lot of movies recently, so that's saying something. Honestly, I, I think I've had more fun with this movie compared to Avatar 2 even. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's because unlike Avatar, Puss in Boots, you know, Shrek, I mean, that's my childhood. I, I had such a great time with those movies, like, more than 10 years ago. I rewatched all the Shrek movies recently, and uh, some of those made me really teary-eyed, <laughs> not gonna lie. And um, even though I, I don't believe I ever watched the first Puss in Boots spin-off movie, like when it first got released, uh, when I did watch it recently, I really liked it as well. But uh, pff, this one, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, man, th this one is on a whole nother level. It's entertaining, humorous, epic, beautiful, and tugs at your heartstrings quite a bit as well. And it's bigger and better than the previous movie. And like I said, it's the most fun I've had in theaters in a while. So in The Last Wish, Puss and Boots discovers that his passion for adventure has taken its toll as he has burnt through eight of his nine lives. Desperate to become the legend that he once was, he sets out on an epic journey, meeting friends and foes along the way, in order to find the mythical last wish to bring him back his lives. But there's one thing I still don't quite fully understand after watching this movie, and please enlighten me if you know, but uh, when exactly does this movie take place? I mean, I searched online and saw that this movie takes place like two years after the events of the first Puss in Boots movie, which is is a prequel to the Shrek movies, I believe. And I thought this one was too, until I saw some of the scenes in this movie, two in particular, where it leads me to believe that this movie, The Last Wish, was actually set after the Shrek movies. Which is crazy, because if that's the case, then there weren't a whole lot of Shrek-related references in this movie. Okay, before I get to talking about the actual uh, movie, real quick, let me just say that since this uh, might be my last video of the year, might be, uh, there are some things I want to talk about, like, more deeply in terms of the future of, uh, like, the future movies, like, some future movies, and also the future uh, of this channel, since, you know, most normally I don't really have the chance to talk about these things. Uh, but more on that, like, towards the end, after my official rating of the movie, that is. But anyway, this movie, I could tell, definitely had the same spirit of the past Shrek films and the previous Puss and Boots movie. It's funny, it's emotional times, and sometimes it gets pretty dark as well. In fact, it's crazy how this is technically a children's movie. <laughs> I mean, well, it isn't really all that scary, um, at least not to me. It might be to a child, uh, but it is definitely on a darker tone than its predecessor and some of the uh, past Shrek movies. There are a lot of themes in regards to life and death, and in this movie there's actually a guy called Death chasing Puss around, hunting him down, as he is on his last life. But I kind of love that about some of these movies, and maybe it's just a horror lover in me. I mean, th these movies aren't really horrifying, I guess, but it, it they are kind of sinister and dark for a children's movie, you know. I, I guess that might be the reason why I like the fourth Shrek movie a lot. I mean, again, everyone has different tastes depending on how old they are, right? I mean, I, I was just... Um, looking at these kids, like, a few seats away from me, they were, like, what, maybe seven, eight, nine, or ten years old? I don't know, but they were, like, I, I was just looking at them and seeing how they were reacting some to some of the darker scenes, and I swear they were, like, telling, like, telling their parents, like, they, that they didn't want to watch those scenes, and they wanted to leave. Eh, each to their own. I, I personally really enjoy those parts, and that brings me back to what made this movie such a joy to watch. Part of it was the darker tone, but it was also mostly the animation and the art style that made that happen. Huge improvement from any of the p previous or like past Shrek movies, right? But I mean, that is obviously to be expected. But still, I mean, the art style was so vibrant and this was such a beautiful movie to watch and the animation made the movie so much more epic, even from the like some of the beginning scenes. The art style was comparable to an anime at certain parts and the animation is comparable to like a flip book where some scenes dip in frame rate to give it that really like cartoony flip book effect or style <laughs> which makes it so artsy and I just really love those scenes even though some people might not necessarily agree with me. 
And on top of that, it had a decent story, and many of the characters were very likable, especially Goldilocks and her three bears, and this one dog. I kind of got a bit emotional, like, where, uh, with Goldilocks' whole story, and also at one part where the art style and animations were so good, it nearly brought me to tears. Now, are there references to Shrek, though? Uh, like I said, not as much as I would have liked, uh, but still, there is, you know, a little bit, like I said, to kind of reference where it was within the kind of Shrek-verse. <laughs> Shrekiverse, uh, Shrek universe, whatever. Uh, but I mean, there are what what there is is that there are a lot of references to other fairy tales. Like I'm pretty sure I saw Cinderella's uh, glass slipper in there, uh, um, uh, among a lot of other things as well. And that's the thing. I love how these movies are like such a creative twist to the old school fairy tales, where there are a lot of references and stuff like that that just reminds you to your childhood in a way. If I had to pick like things that I didn't really like about this movie, it would have to be that it would, it would have to be the main villains of this movie and how they weren't really that interesting as characters and the characters weren't all that fleshed out. You know, some villains are ones that you really learn to feel for, uh, and those are like some of the best kind of villains. Uh, these guys weren't. They they didn't have too elaborate of like uh, backstory. And also, I guess there are a lot of characters in this movie. Some might say too much and that the movie is kind of messy because of that, you know. Um, but for me, I say just enough. But I do understand if like some people, uh, can, like if they can feel a bit overwhelmed by this movie. Ultimately, Puss in Boots The Last Wish, I feel, is definitely one that longtime fans of the Shrek movies and Puss in Boots will enjoy a lot. They definitely got this movie down with the animation. It's definitely one of, if not the best, aspect of this movie and what made it such an epic, thrilling, and exhilarating watch. You know, apparently this movie was actually going to release around 2018 or so, something like that. Like, holy. But then it got delayed or cancelled or pushed back or something because of, like, company restructuring and, like, policies and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Something like that. And then it just got delayed until Christmas 2022. Weirdly enough though, this movie actually got like a advanced screening or like a public screening event uh, end of November, like on the 26th or something. Like, yeah, around, around three weeks ago. And it also got released in a bunch of other countries before then even. Man. Jeez. That, that really sucks. I wish I could have saw this movie earlier, is all I'm trying to say, but uh, let me know if you've seen it or not already, or if you want to see it. And if you want to see it, let me just say, like, if you're not sure, if you like Shrek and Puss in Boots, then this is definitely a must-watch, even if you're an adult now, like me. <laughs> but yeah, the earliest I could have watched it here in Australia was last week, but unfortunately, I was just busy with work and whatnot, and being tired from it, so uh, yeah, yeah, I could have, I I could only watch it this week. But I checked out the IMDb release calendar for this movie, and man, this this movie's release dates are wild. <laughs> oh man, like I said, I really, I really wish I could have watched this movie earlier, so that I could be in the conversation. But it is what it is. I'm going to give Puss and Brutes the Last Wish an A. Minus. Now, will we see a fifth Shrek movie? Apparently so, it's coming out this year, which I honestly cannot wait because, yeah, after watching, after re-watching the uh, Shrek movies recently, like, man, it just reminds me to how great those movies were. And the end scene of this movie, uh, Puss and Bruce The Last Wish, kind of confirms it too. I mean, they better make a fifth movie because it's kind of building up to that in a bit. Like, it kind of feels like it's building up to that. I think it got announced already. But who knows? But I gotta say, like, after this movie, man, I really wish they will make at least another solo Puss in Boots movie because this was a true blast to watch. But anyway, okay, now... Guys, this this might be my last video of the year. Uh, it might be. It possibly will be, or it probably won't. It might not be. <laughs> I don't know. I might see another movie 
before the end of this year like closes who knows right i but i just thought i'd talk a little bit um at the end of this the review of this movie uh, because I just thought this movie was so awesome. I'd rather talk about some of the stuff that I kind of want to talk about, you know, at the end of this uh, movie, because who knows if the next movie I watch, if I do watch it this year, uh, will be positive or not. So I kind of want to talk when I'm in a positive kind of mood, you know. And also, if this is my last video of the year, because I don't want to wait, uh, because I don't think I'll be producing a best of uh, movies, like best of 2020, 22 uh, movies at least my list for this year yeah i know such a shame man god what will you do without one of those videos right <laughs> oh man such a shame but i mean i just feel like i don't watch at least this year i didn't i didn't really watch enough video like movies to do that but also since last year last year's video you know the best movies of 2021 didn't do very well and also this year's movies haven't oh, haven't really been that good to be honest compared to last year's movies at least like i feel like if i made a list uh on this year's it definitely won't be as good as last year's and uh, i also missed a lot of movies this year as well due to being busy with work getting my license and this one time i got sick with covid some of the movies include Ambulance and Lost City. Those probably <laughs> wouldn't have made the list, but uh, there were all the also movies like Top Gun Maverick and Every uh, Everything Everywhere at Once. Yeah, <laughs> those movies that <laughs> would have gotten a chance, but I just didn't have the chance to watch them this year or could be bothered. Maybe I'll watch them later and yeah, tell you like what my ultimate movie uh, movie of this year is like in another video or something. I don't know. Thing is though, I never really liked the first Top Gun movie, so I wasn't really dying to watch the second one, but a lot of people, like I'm seeing all around social media saying that how that movie is like movie of the year or something like that, and I'm just like, really? I mean, me not being a big fan of the first Top Gun might, that's why I never watched the second one. I mean, I don't know, but for me, you know, or through all the movies that I've watched, at least on this channel that I've shown, I've watched. For me, the the best movie. I'm just gonna say it here because I probably am not in the mindset to make one of those top videos anymore. Even though I really want to, um, just to cap everything off of this year. But I just didn't make enough movies to like warrant. I didn't review enough movies to warrant that. But let me just say that. And, and I don't have like a viewership, like a lot of people wanting me to make one. So I, I just don't have any followers at all at this point, to be honest. <laughs> so I'll just say it here that the best movie of 2022 for me was Don't Worry Darling, a horror thriller mystery flick starring Florence Pugh and Harry Styles. And I mean, I'm not going to say too much about what I think about it th uh, here, but let's just say that watch that review, then you'll know why. I mean, watch watch my watch watch that review that I did then you'll know why <laughs> but anyway I think I'm just gonna end this video right here because it will get too long otherwise but I'll end it by saying that next year wow next year is going to be a bang year for movies hopefully I mean every year uh, like before that year I always say it's gonna be a good year but I mean last year I mean this year and also I guess last year a lot of movies that I really anticipated didn't do so well so I really don't want to kind of jinx everything here but let's just say like next year there's a huge lineup of movies that I oh man that looks very good I mean <laughs> I just have so many movies I'm looking forward to seeing that I don't want to spend any more time of this video like any more of this video's time talking about it but it's going to be a great year hopefully so if I don't see you again uh, this year on this channel, then Merry Christmas, have a Happy New Year, and uh, I guess I'll see you guys next year. Until next time.